Welcome in everybody to this week's podcast of the Sky Sport Playmakers series. Uh, the gentleman that we have with us for this particular episode needs no introduction. He's bounced around the rugby globe. Uh, he joins us from Japan. It's Hadley Parks. Welcome in, mate. How are you? Yeah, thank you very much, Marshy, and um, I'm very well, thank you, and it's a pleasure to be on. So we find you in Japan, but I'm going to hit you with a, a question first up that you'll probably think, where does this come from? But I was trying to get an interesting fact, and don't worry, it's not about your golf swing or anything stupid like that. <laughs> but what I researched was the fact that in, in your spare time, you're a little bit of a dark horse and you've turned to the dark side, which is the media, and you're a BBC column writer. How about that? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, the the, um, the media guy in Wales came to me and said, "Oh, would I be keen to do it?" And um, and so and I was like, "Well, I'm not really too great with uh, with writing too much, but um, no, it was really good. I, I just it was a ghost writer, and uh, and the guy was would just talk like this, and and, uh, and people just wanted to know what kind of happened in, in camp, and you know what you got up to in your spare time. We got a lot of beans about it, but uh, it was quite good. It was a, it was it was a good way to see a different side of it, but um, yeah, I'm kind of glad that I'm not doing that anymore, actually. Well, off the back of that, even though you don't think that, um, rugby will finish one day, so I've given you a really good early plug, early doors for all those uh, people out there <laughs> in the internet and the newspapers. Um, look, I, I mentioned that we do find you in Japan. Um, I can speak from experience. It's a far cry from, from Wales, uh, and things were going really well for you in Wales. What, what prompted the move to Japan? Um, yeah, it is different from Wales. Uh, it was a move that um, it was more of a family decision. Um, we just had our first baby um, just straight after the World Cup, and, and we wanted to be a little bit closer to uh, to New Zealand and be able, being able to fly backwards and forwards. My wife um, to be able to do that. Unfortunately, that's not quite happening at the moment. But um, and it was also after the World Cup. You know, I loved it over here. It was an experience that um, that I really wanted to to do um, to to experience as a family as well. A different culture. Um, a different way of life, um, really immersing yourself in, you know, a country that doesn't speak English too much. And so and, uh, I was really excited um, to come over here and just experience something completely different um, and, and just make the most of it. Because as you said before, rugby will come to an end. And, and so you've got to try and make the most of, of traveling the world and, and getting these experiences before one day settling down and, and probably being in New Zealand for a very long time. Well, it's a far cry from where you started. You know, we're at, uh, you know, I won't say the end of your career. You're in the twilight of your career and uh, you've been really successful and congratulations on that. But for you, it all started with the mighty Manawatu way back in 2010. What are your memories of sort of going into provincial rugby around that time? Yeah, it has been a while actually and, and it was awesome. So I was down in Christchurch for, for university and, and down there and I, and then came back to Minnawatu two for three months for that ITN Cup season. I was just really excited to actually head home because I've been in Christchurch studying uh, for four and a half years. Um, so that was quite good. And it was a place that I went to Palmy Boys as well. So I was, played for Minnawatu two during the age grades. And, and you look through that team, I think there was about 14 players that I'd either played with um, in the first 15 or, or I knew very well. So um, it was really exciting. And Parks is going to come up with some points. I gave him the build up and he's responded in kind. And just loved it. It was a you know first taste of professional rugby in ITM, and and just getting out there and, and trying to mark in. And, and he had Aaron Cruden, who's not a bad ten, and inside you as well, who was giving you some good pulls. So it was um, and Aaron Smith at nine before. Uh, so he had some you know quality players around you, which was um, yeah loved it and, and had a great time there. And then the progression into Super Rugby, you had a season with the Blues, um, pretty good season actually. <laughs> Wikipedia tells me you played 13 games that year. Um, around that time, mate, what, what, what was the environment at the Blues what, like and how was your, your experience in entering into Super Rugby from Provincial? Look, for my, uh, it was my first year and so I was just really excited. Um, you know, everything was, you well, you turned up on the first day and you were kind of looking around and you, you saw there were these All Blacks around you, which uh, you'd only ever really seen on TV. And um, and so, and they were all very welcoming, you know, likes of Jerome Kaino, Isaiah Tuiava, Kevin Mialami, you know, great guys, not very nice guys. And so it was um, it was quite intimidating at first, but like those boys were absolutely outstanding, made you feel extremely welcome. And uh, that season, um, you know, I was in the wider training at the start and then Isaiah uh, got injured and I actually... I'm more of a midfielder, but I ended up playing fullback most of the season, so the old pace got tested out a few <laughs> times there. But uh, yeah, I loved it. Uh, we, I think it was the year. Well, it was the year that we signed Piriwepu and Ma Nonu from um, from the Hurricanes as well, and they were, they were, um, it was 
that had just come off a great season and winning the World Cup in 2011. And, you know, I remember talking to James Parsons and who's um, had a great career with the Blues since then and, and with the All Blacks. And, and both of us were in the right of training. We were like, oh, hopefully we can just get one or two games this year and we'll probably win the comp kind of thing. <laughs> and then uh, it didn't quite go that way. There was a fair few injuries in there. and we, I think we only ended up winning four or five games. But um, I loved every moment of it because it was my first opportunity and it was just, you know, a, a taste of, of playing rugby at that level. And, and, you know, you wanted to get a little bit more of it and, and just, you know, it was... A, not quite the season that we were hoping for, but it was an amazing season anyway for, for me personally. It must have been quite refreshing to come into a side when you've got, like you mentioned, the likes of Jerome, Jerome Kano, uh, Ma'anonu you mentioned, um, Piriwepu. Uh, how did you find those guys when you sort of first entered that environment? You mentioned they were welcoming, but sort of off the field, I always myself remember Ma'a being quite quiet in and around the training field, but a, a bit of a joker off it. Like, um, believe it or not, he, he was my first roommate for the All Blacks and uh, he'd never roomed with me before. The first day I went away into town uh, to have a coffee after training, I'd just chucked my training gear off, I came back and he had washed, washed it, dried it, and it was folded on my bed. Is that the Martin Nodu that you experienced <laughs> in the Blues some uh, would have been seven <laughs> or eight years later? <laughs> not quite, I think I was the one doing the washing, to be honest, <laughs> but... Um... Uh, no, th th like those guys were great. Puri and Ma used to, um, they used to take me out for coffees every now and then, which was quite good. So we'd just go down from the training field. Um, Kevin Mialamu, like you would have played a lot with him. He he's the nicest guy you'd come across. Um, if you had him as a roommate, I ain't get you. He was captain, so he had his own room. So, uh, but I remember boys talking. You know, if you had him as a roommate, he'd be the one offering. You know, would you like a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or, or a snack? And so, and those guys were outstanding. I think Puri at this stage was um, he was quite enjoying his snacks as well so he was always turning up back at the hotel with a couple of snacks for the boys and a couple of lollies but uh like they, they were great guys and you know it was a lot of fun and, and just being around them and, and talking to them and, and away from the rugby field and away probably from the media as so to speak that they're, they're just normal blokes and they just want to have a good time which is um which was quite special to um, get to know them in that way well, well, to be perfectly honest, mate, when, when I delved into your career, you're not really a person to sit on your bum. So you, you had that year with the Blues, and then you decided to go of all places to South Africa. So you, you went over there and um, joined up with the Kings. What, what prompted that move? Um, it, it was uh, with that Blues season, we, we, it didn't go quite to plan, and, and Pat Lamb, unfortunately, um, had to move on after that season. I think uh, if Pat had stayed around, I, he, I got on quite well for him. I think I might have been staying back at the Blues, but... You know, that's all, um, you know, crystal ball kind of stuff. So uh, there was an opportunity over there with Matt Sexton, another good mate of yours. Um, he went over as head coach and Brad Moore, who's now, you know, the All Blacks coach. So things have worked out extremely well for, for him too. And um, it was just a chance to experience something different. Um, you know, we're Kings. I think we only found out probably a couple of months before the competition started that we were going to be in the competition. So she was a bit of a late um, call up or a late kind of getting the squad organised. Um, but it was an amazing experience living there on the coast. Um, like we, we had a house 200 metres away from Summer Strand. I don't know if you've been to PE yep. with the Super Rugby. Um, well, it, it, you know, it's not a bad peach, is it? So, uh, so we're just living away from that and, it, you know, a nice walkway along the water there. And so and it was a pretty good lifestyle there for a year and, um, and we loved it. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Different kind of mindset as well with those players. Um, it was quite interesting at, at times. Go on. No, that, so that was my next question. You see, this is why you can, this is the BBC <laughs> column coming back. You see, you, you're actually prompting my questions now. Like, I'm fascinated what it was like around that sort of South African culture and the way that they approached and thought about the game. Was it a bit of an eye-opener? Although you've got New Zealand coaching there, I guess, in the background with our thought processes, but I, I guess they've still got their way and their mentality about the way they go about things. Yeah, they certainly do. And, and, and talking that, like the boys, we worked hard, and, and it was probably the hardest preseason because um, Alan Solomon's was a director of rugby, so um, and he just wanted us to be one of the fittest teams in the competition, and uh, and so we worked extremely hard, and we actually got off to a good start. We we beat the Force at home, and then we beat um, I'm sorry, we, then we very narrowly lost to the Chiefs at home, and then we went on tour to New Zealand. So we're actually flying high of confidence as we're flying into Christchurch. And, saw the Crusaders team named and it was pretty much all the All Blacks were playing and, and, and we, you know, there's not a lot, a huge amount of experience in our side and I was like looking at it going, well, this might be a tough one, but we were, we were pretty confident, but it was that week as well. We had five foreigners in our squad. We had um, 
And so we were under the understanding that we were allowed to play all five foreigners because of a little dispensation because we had to um, come together so late. But literally on the Tuesday that we got into Christchurch, we got told, no, you're not allowed. So three of the boys that had flown over with us had to fly straight back to South Africa, unfortunately, and leave the squad, and then we had to bring other boys over. Um, and But then, fortunately for me, I was, I was named to play against the Crusaders. And I think it was, must have been after about the fourth or fifth try they had scored in the first half. They were, they were absolutely dusting us up. <laughs> we're behind the goalpost, and one of the big fours goes, oh, booty. Mate, these boys are soft. They're sidestepping us and running around us. You know, they're very soft. And I was kind of thinking to myself, and this is not the time to say it, I was thinking to myself, oh, it's kind of the idea really, isn't it, to kind of go around the team. So... Um, they kind of opened your eyes up, but yeah, great lads got really well looked after, and um, it was it was it was a different different kind of year, but a, a very fun and enjoyable year as well. So you, you you had your season over there, and then stayed on, and then um, you, as everybody do, um, goes through in their career, had a shoulder injury, I think it was, or you had some injury issues before you came back to New Zealand. Was that hard to get through? Or you just see it as part and parcel of the game. It was, um, it was actually the second game on tour. Um, we were playing against the Hurricanes at Westpac Stadium. So the Hurricanes had always been the team that I supported growing up because I was you know, a lot of North Island boy. So I was quite excited to get back to Westpac. Family were all there as well. And I remember I went to tackle Dane Coles and whacked my arm on his, uh, on his, on his shoulder and broke one of my forearm bones. And so then, which was probably the best place to break it really because then I got four weeks to stay in New Zealand with the family, which was quite nice. But, um, and so that was that kind of put a little damper on the season. So I wasn't involved. Probably I was out for about twelve games then. Um, but when we got back to South Africa, it was actually like it, it enabled us to enjoy South Africa as much as possible. Like to be able to go and do travel, go to game farms, um, you know, travel up and down the coast. I don't know if you've been along the Garden Route where Plidenburg Bay, Nisner, those areas. You know, it's just beautiful places, beautiful parts of South Africa and the world. And it, I'd train in the morning. Um, and then come home because I wasn't allowed to, or I couldn't train with the team. So I'd watch sometimes and then I'd come home and my partner and I would, uh, would just go down to the beach. So we had the best tans we've ever had in our life. So it was, uh, in terms of that, it was quite good fun. You ended up coming back to New Zealand, mate, didn't you? And um, got back into some MPC? Uh, I got back into ITM, so I was back with Auckland. So yep. it was always nice coming back to Auckland, having a bit of stability there. Uh, and wanted to actually play well in that season to try and get another super gig in New Zealand, have another year, which was um, which worked out quite nicely with the Hurricanes. But it was Auckland, I, I, can't, I think we might have actually made it to the final that year, or might have been the year before, um, which we lost to Canterbury, unfortunately. But it was a tight game down there. And so it was quite nice playing with Auckland because you had Ali Williams and Daniel Braid, which had a lot of experience, and they were coming back. And then you had a lot of young fellas coming through, like Charles Piatel, Ben Lamb. Um, boys that went on and, and have done extremely well. Um, so it was, it, was always, it was always good to come back and, and play in ITM Cup games. All right. Yeah. Complete honesty question here. How much did you know about Wales before you signed to go to Wales? <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew where it was. Well, there you go. There's a start. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I actually, uh, this is, um, I haven't uh, admitted to this, but I, I, would, um, I remember going to dad, uh, I'm talking to a team called Lanelou, and he goes, Lanelou, yeah. in Wales, it's a place out west Wales called Lanelou, because it's spelt kind of that way, and he goes, you mean Clanifley? I went, no, 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 it's Lanelou, and uh, he goes, no, 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 it's Clanifley, and so and it was kind of, um, you know, the Welsh language is a little bit tougher there, and it, it's certainly a bit different, but uh, look. No, to be honest, not a huge amount. It was just an opportunity that arise and, and to work with Wayne P back again. And, and so then, uh, it was, you know, we were excited. Um, it was at that stage where both my partner, now wife, and I wanted to go overseas. We were, we were kind of jumping out a bit to do that kind of OE that a lot of New Zealanders and Australians do um, and make the most of travelling around Europe. And so and this was a, a chance to go and do that and, and to make the most of living over that side of the world. So you get on the big bird and off you both go and you, you land at Heathrow and everything's very exciting. <laughs> I don't know whether they had you on the train or they were generous enough to pick you up in a car, but you then obviously headed off down um, to the Clanethley and uh, into the Scarlets. What, what were your first impressions in, in arriving there? Um, I remember uh, driving along, so the agency picked us up and we're driving along. We're going past Port Talbot um, <laughs> and being a... <laughs> A Kiwi person, I was always like, oh, it's always nice being living next to the water here and everything and being able to have a nice look out. Uh, but you're going along there and there's big steelworks and everything going on. And so and it was like, oh, it's a bit of an interesting place. And then you come into Clinefle and 
And there's still the rugby posts that they beat the All Blacks with um, as you're driving in uh, back in uh, in the early 70s with yes. 9-3 or something like that. So, um, and so, then, uh, but turned up and, and the management were there and the boys and, and great lads, as you, you you would know from your time at the Ospreys, you know, the, the Welsh lads are very similar to the Kiwis, very welcoming, very uh, very good lads, uh, quite Quite brutal with their banter at times, but uh, you know it was good. It got in there quite early on, and I think it was nice to have Wayne as your coach. So you just had a bit of familiarity around him as well. So you had someone that you knew when you turned up. Moving over and, and wanting that OE as you describe it, experiencing being away from New Zealand, but being able to play rugby. You know, we're, we're all very grateful for that. What the game gives us. In your mind, moving to Wales, had you ever thought about? Playing for Wales one day was that ever in your mindset, or you were just over there doing your thing? No, it was just over there doing doing our thing. It was think um, just wanted to come over, experience that OE as you said, um, and for the first two and a half years, that's pretty much what we did. Um, I remember the coaches started giving me you know clauses in my contract, or saying that they, there was clauses in my contract because I go into their office and I say, oh, it looks like we've got a Friday game that weekend, and then we've got a Sunday game the following weekend. You know, does that mean we've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday off? They're like, yes, Park City, we do. And so I'm like, oh, good, sweet. So my wife and I would then go and book. You know, you could fly. I remember we got to Denmark for seven pounds flights, you know, Portugal, places like that. And and so, no, it wasn't really on the radar. And then it was at time when, when you started to renegotiate or, or look at options and, and you're looking at other places. Um, there were a couple of rumours and, and, you know, not rumours, but there was a couple of, um, well, a bit of chat out there saying that, you know, you know, if you stick around, there could be an opportunity there. And so and I thought to myself, you know, why not? You know, it would be an amazing opportunity. And, and so then you may as well try and give it as much of, um, much of a crack as you can. And, and hopefully, you know, something might come of it. Yeah, I had, I had the same experience, actually, with the, with the Ospreys. I, um, my, my beautiful daughter was born over there. So when she was obviously born, I was off work. And I remember the first day I went back into the, into the meeting room uh, and nobody had known and I walked in there and everybody turned around when I walked in and they looked at me and, I, and no one said anything and it was deathly quiet and I said what and they said boy or girl and I said girl ah and then they just carried on with the meeting <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think they were hoping for maybe a little Welsh rugby player there somewhere but that's the way that they are so how did you qualify um so they just qualified on the free uh, residency rule yep so I actually um, I arrived on the 2nd of December um, 2014, I think it was, and then the 2nd of December we're playing the Springboks in the last autumn game. Um, uh, and so and I didn't actually think that would be involved. And I actually booked to go back to New Zealand because I had my brother's wedding to go back to um, two weeks before that. And my, actually, my, now my sister and brother-in-law um, were getting married the following weekend as well. So I had two weeks in New Zealand there and then... All of a sudden, um, I got picked, and so and it was kind of that got put on hold. So I, I had to fly out. I could only go to one wedding, um, which was my brother's, and so and I, I had six days out of the UK, and of that six days, it was only um, two, oh, three nights in New Zealand. So she was a pretty hectic um, little period, but got back in, and then um, and then got back, and there was a weekend. The food weekend was when we were playing the All Blacks, so it was quite nice to um, be involved in the build up to that game and, and training with the boys, and then after that. The following week was when I was actually uh, involved and fully involved, and it was something that you know that whole build up, just that experience of it. It was um, it was an amazing week, and it was uh, you know memories that I'll cherish for a very long time. So obviously you had the opportunity, um, you got selected, and you made you made your test debut. What what was it like pulling on that jersey and and running out and representing Wales? She was pretty nervous times. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, people out there that have their opinions on the on the residency rule and, and the way that it goes, and, and, it, and there's been changes there. But um, just very excited. Um, the whole week leading up to it, a bit of media. Um, there was in. Uh, I had to learn the anthem. It was, it was something that I, I really wanted to do, and and uh, it's as I said before, it's, it's not the easiest of languages to learn. So Reese Patchell and Ken Owens were very helpful there in, in teaching me the anthem and. And so and just going out onto that field, well, firstly, driving in, um, as you would know, driving through Cardiff, you kind of come down onto um, mm. uh, to the main street, going down to the stadium, and there's four horses, four police men and women that are on, on horseback, and you go down, and, and both sides of the street are just lined with supporters, both home and away. And, 
it's pretty cool going along and everyone's cheering you, cheering you. And I always tried to take my headphones off at this stage because it was quite a um, quite a cool you know part of the trip in. And then you go into the stadium and there's always a choir as you're walking out to walking into your changing room. They were singing. Um, and then going out doing the anthem, um, getting the W, which was nice. Got a couple of meat pies, which was which were you know made it pretty special. And it was to get the the win against South Africa, which is a team that um, you know. It's been one of the top teams in the world for a very long time, you know, current world champions. And, and so it was uh, just a special occasion, one that, um, that I was uh, very grateful to be given that privilege to be able to do. There's nothing like going to a Rugby World Cup and, and, and you got that opportunity to go with Wales um, to Japan and you must have been pretty proud to, to get selected in that squad and then go, go over and represent and, and be at a World Cup and be amongst the greatest players and the greatest teams in the game. Yeah, very much. You knocked it, um, you know, really put the nail on the head there. It was, um, you know, a dream come true, um, you know, and to a country that probably traditionally hasn't really, um, would have been a, a different World Cup to a, to an English-speaking uh, country, sorry. And so then, um, the way we got looked after, the hospitality, um, the way the Japanese people really, you know, uh, just got stuck into it. It was an amazing time over here. And, and to be able to play and, and to go as far as we did, um, you know, only be three points, maybe five minutes away from almost probably going one game better. Um, you know, it, it, it was still a very special time and it was a great time. And it was also good to have all the family over from New Zealand to be able to come over and, and to enjoy that too and enjoy that together. It was actually my parents' 40th wedding anniversary of the weekend of ah. the semi final. So, um, so all the brothers, so I've got three older brothers, so they, um, they all uh, over and so we had a nice dinner for them and so and we don't really get time together like that too often now unfortunately because one lives in Australia and I'm, I'm overseas but you know mum and dad would have loved that which was quite cool and, and very them. so um, you know it was great. Where to from now what's what's in the in the future for you and um, what are you thinking about rugby wise do you do you think about maybe getting back and playing some rugby in New Zealand? Uh, I'm not too sure on that look I, I think we just we're very excited to be here at Panasonic. When Panasonic came out and and said they were interested, we got quite excited because it's one of those. It's a prestigious club um, in Japan. It's a club that um, that you have here. You heard quite a lot about in New Zealand with the players that have been there. David Pocock, you mentioned Tony Brown, um, Sonny Bill Williams has been up here. Matt Todd has been here. So I've had friends that have come. Sam Whitelock was here last year. So you talked to him, and like those boys have all loved it here. And it, it's been a club that. You know, it's helped you settle into Japan and, and to make it as enjoyable and as easy as possible to be here and, and to you know make the most of it for family life and, and getting babies into into daycare into swimming lessons and, and pointing us in the right direction where the best ramen and bakery is kind of thing. So you, you, you know the important stuff here, but um and loved it and and the team environment is a great environment to be in. So look for me, I just really want to enjoy it as much as possible here and to try and play my part and hopefully being as it you know with the club as successful as possible um, while we're here and, and hopefully win some silverware. Um, we're certainly very excited with the players we've got, you know, great coaching staff with Robbie heading that up and then um, some uh, younger coaches below them that are all pretty early on in their co coaching careers, but, um, you know, they're all great guys. Where, what state do you think New Zealand rugby's in? Yeah, watching from being inside the Welsh camp and, and basically from a New Zealanders' perspective, looking from afar. Do you think our game is in a good place? The All Blacks, if we're perfectly honest, probably were a bit out of rhythm last year um, to our high expectations. Do you, does anything concern you or you think that uh, things will adjust pretty quickly and, and that, that we're looking nice and healthy and strong? No, I think, um, look, there's an adjustment period there and I think there's a lot of international sides that are going through that at the moment. Um, like you look at that New Zealand team and you and you some of those boys, those young lads that are coming on, you like looks at Caleb Clark, um, just you know, only a couple of years out of high school, got an opportunity and has gone extremely well. There's so much depth for, for New Zealand rugby. Um, you just it's it's like a conveyor about people just keep coming through, you know, the first fifteen competition, um, club stuff. It just keeps coming through and I think maybe new coach, I know Fozzie was um took over and there was a little bit of a change in, in with Brad and, and uh, Plumtree coming in there um, and other coaches as well. But, you know, there is an adjustment period, but they, they finished off strongly. Well, Hadley, hey, look, thank you so much for joining us. You sound really enthusiastic. You're in a good space. You're at a good club with Panasonic. Um, 
and uh, they're lucky to have you. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Marshy. Thank you very much, and cheers for having me on.